This application is called the Air Fryer Database. The approach for using this database is for managing information related to individual records for the Air Fryer called a catalog. And what a catalog allows you to do, you can set up with one ID, which is the master linking record in a database. You can add the date of when you added certain recipes and or created by certain people or created source. You can sort by that and create a record that's separate to anything you want in these records. In addition, you can group the records so that when you do a find, which is like a search, in the future, you can use any of the field names, including anything here and anything in the notes if you want to, to do a find. What is a find? If you go up to the Do Action menu, you can start a find. And when you start the find, you can add anything in there that you want that is related to any field in here. Now you cannot do this in a portal, which I'm going to show you eventually here, how a multi-line portal cannot be used in a find. Notice that there's a magnifying glass in here that uh, is looking for information. Basically, that's the metaphor. If you wanted to put anything in there, you could and sort by it. If you put the wrong thing in, what's going to happen? And for example, if I put in, in the creator, I put Mac, which I don't have a Mac. And I can go ahead and say, perform the find. And it gives you a dialog saying, no records match the find criteria. You can either cancel here and try to add something else, or you can modify the data. Now, like if I modify it, I can go ahead and start in here again, and I can say, well, I won't even say the whole last name. I'll just put in VAU, which is a partial pr uh, product of my first name. And then when I actually go in and say perform the find, it'll find the record. It's very quick, as you can see. Now, when you come to this record, one of the first things you're going to notice, it has an add record button. Only records screens that have an add record button are used to add records. This particular screen is called the primary screen. It has a linking ID number that is added automatically. That's why it's colored in a different color. You cannot change this particular field. But what it does is it links everything from this data record. In this case, if I wanted to create only recipes for my name, I could create this record. And then I go ahead and date when I started creating records. And I can call it my air fryer monthly recipe, or I can call it anything I want to and I can add more descriptions in here. And then I can group it by whatever I want. Now in this case, there's a drop-down list, and I can add things like business, creator, date, editor, month, website, and year. Now say I wanted to change that and add more to it. I could click on this header out here that's named grouped by, and if I click on that, it's gonna take me to a different screen where if I add a new record, and I can put in, the type it in here at the top. I can put it in there by month, by year, whatever I want as far as that criteria. Now each one of these, when it says grouped by, you have the option to go ahead and group it by another group of some sort. Say for example, you want to do uh, my party group. So you can have a party in there. Uh, but that has another screen, which is called category, we can show that in. To navigate back to the original screen, what I can do is click off here and come up to the menu, and I can say I can go into the uh, Air Fryer Catalog. What that is is the screen that we are on, the Air Fryer Catalog. What we're going to do now in the Air Fryer Catalog is to cover a little bit more information. I will be coming back to the menus. I will be coming back to the popover Do Action menu to explain all of these things. I'll do that when I get done showing you this over here. A relational database has the ability to add data within this screen to records that you don't have to navigate to. So for example, if I wanted to go to the res uh, recipe portal, I can go there, but that's not where we add the original records. If I go and show you this, I can go ahead and go to the recipe uh, popover, as this is called, and show you that the data can be entered that's going into this portal from here. So if I click on it, it comes up here, and now you see the data that's in here. I'm going to express a little bit of what's in this record so you can get an idea of what, how this works. A popover is a record that pops up, and instead of having you to navigate to another screen to add this data and then come back to this screen and try to figure out where this screen is as far as who actually had it. Now, if you look up here, it says record ID number one, and this is a uh, recipe I put in in this record. Now, when I first look at it, it's going to be blank. Like if I scroll down, I can add another recipe, and it will look like this when it's blank. 
if you fill in any information in here, it's going to start adding information into this record as a, it'll first give you an ID, and the ID will be the same as the one that is in the master record. For example, if I click over here, all the records for this particular person or group or whatever it is, is all number one. But if I wanted to create another new record, which would add another record, it would blank all the records in this area over here. But right now, it would look like that when I open. But if you scroll up and you look, you'll see there's a record in there now concurrently. If I wanted to see that record in a portal, I could click on the portal. It almost looks identical, except for it's slightly different shaped as far as the fields are concerned. What you'll notice here right off the bat is that all the same information in that popover is actually collected over here. If I change anything here, now I, once this record is created, I can say change it and it will allow me to change it. And for example, if I go back now to the catalog and I go ahead and pop this popover here, you'll see now that the word change is in here. But you must first create the record in the catalog and then from there, you can go back and edit it or do anything you want to as far as adding more data. For example, if I didn't have this information in here, right here where it said change, if it wasn't in there and I took it out or added it, it's going to add it here, but you have to first create one record here in the popover. If that's not clear, uh, you can watch the videos and they'll, as we're using the application, it'll add different information as far as how you add different things. Now I'm going to point out one thing in this record, in the popover. We're looking at it, we have a navigation to the portal where we can go directly. We don't have to use the me a menu at the top in order to go to a portal where a record has a portal. Now in this particular case, these are portal records. If I go to the actual portal, it's an individual record. You cannot do a find in this particular screen and hence the reason why it's blocked out so you don't have to see it. If I wanted to really do a search, I could go over to the portal itself and start a find in the portal. So I could say start a find here. Now anything that is not in a portal, multi-line portal records, which we'll show you in a little bit, uh, can be searched in all the fields. But if it's in a multi-line portal, you cannot do that. So let's go back to the main menu again. In the main menu now, we're going to say, uh, let's look at the air fryer images. What this allows you to do is add as many records in here as you want for this particular uh, set of records. Once again, it has its own ID. Uh, so if I added something in there, you'll see it has the ID will pop up. Now in this particular case, uh, it depends on what device you're using. We can use a Mac, a PC Windows, an iPhone, or an iPod, or iPad. Any of those devices will allow you to do it. Now, if you use an iPhone or an iPad, this because it's a standalone application, if you put it on an iPhone or iPad, it runs in an application called FMGO. And if you talk to us at support, we're going to walk you through setting up these records so that you can use this application on your iPhone or iPad. Now, if this is on a Mac or a PC, you will not need to set it up but you cannot, once it's created, you cannot edit the screens and change the way that the actual application works. We're on an iPad or an iPhone, we can do that. What I mean by changing it, I can remove the application from the iPad or iPhone, make changes to it, and then put it back into FMGO, and it would show all the items that were changed and now be part of the database. Now, let's go to the portal over here. In this portal, what this actually is, is if I want to see it larger or I want to export it, I can go over here and I could say export this field and it would create a record that looks like this only at the original size. Right now this is a, sh uh, a cooking list that shows things like veg vegetables, chicken, beef, and other things. The temperature it's actually used at and the length of time that it takes to cook that particular item and there's different things down here as far as different things you can cook. Now this is called the cooking chart. I, I titled it that way. If I had another record where it was named something else, that would mean that it would be a different image as well. You can go off, for example, and I'm going to point this out. You can go in and say insert a picture. And if you're on an iPad or iPhone, it'll say insert from photo library or words to that effect. You can also in, insert a file, say like a PDF file, so that it shows up in the screen. This is similar to a PDF 
image right here, or if I wanted to export it, I could export it and have the full PDF version of that. Or I can say copy it and go to some other screen and paste it back in there, into that particular screen. Now I want to show you this. Since this is image ID number one, if I do another one for a different client catalog, this would not be one anymore. It would be two or three or whatever it is. So you have the option to create as many records, parent records as you want, or the primary record. And I'll go back over to this area here so you can see in the catalog. Again, if I create another new record here for this, and it goes blank, and I'm adding another, say like a catalog, and that's what this actually is, I can have as many catalogs as I want, an infinite number, and I might want to set up one for oh, a year or up by a number of different factors I could use to set up and use this. Like for example, if I was going to one individual website where I wanted to copy all the recipes, I would start up by creating a record in here and put the creator's name in there for the person that actually had this record. So I'm going to change my name. It was spelled wrong. So you can also correct things like that. This does not cause any problem to edit these fields. The only field that you can edit is the critical one, and that's this one up here. Okay, let's go through, like I said, we're going to go through the menu options here for the do action. We already did a start and a find. Once you've done a start and find, and you're looking at a listing of records in a, a list view, you have to once go back, uh, when you can't find all the records you're looking for, Click on Show All, and what it'll do is it'll bring back all the records back into selection. A Go First is when you're looking at something. In fact, let's just switch over to a list view so we can see that. In this, there's only one record in the entire database so far on the list view. I could go down here, and I could say uh, Go First, Go Next, and it will go down the list, or I can go to the last record, a prior record, and next record. So I can navigate through here, or I can just scroll down and pick on a record and then I could say I want to see that record, and I could click on the Edit button. It'll take me into that particular screen. I can also do this. I could say Receipt Portal, or pardon me, Recipe Portal. It'll pop over the recipe for the current record in the ID that I'm working on right now. And then I can also go back to the portal for this record by going from here. This is a view only, but you can add data in here. But it's not necessary because you can go right back to the main screen catalog and edit that data. And for example, the data we were just looking at was this over here. So it's not even a part of the individual record. There'd be a number of them in here. So there'd be one ID number one with many records in it for that particular catalog that you're working in. The same somewhat is for the images. You can put as many images in here you, as you want, but they're tied back to image ID one. So if I went to somebody else's catalog, which I don't have an option to do that right now, if I went to somebody else's catalog and I opened theirs up, then all the data in recipes would be locked into this particular ID, and all the images would be locked into the same ID. Okay, let's go ahead and go down a little bit more on this. Uh, we did the omit means that if you're in a, something like a list view and you have a bunch of records that you're looking at, if you wanted to sort the list somewhat by omitting one of the records, you could do that when the one you're, you're viewing is in there. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go over here and we're going to say, in the Do Action button, we're going to say Omit. And go down here, Omit the record. And you'll notice that it took the one record that was in there to view, and it's gone. I can reverse that by saying either Show All, which would show all the records in the database, or I can show the omitted ones, and it'll bring back only the ones that were omitted. Hopefully that's clear. So we did omitted, or show omitted. And then we have a print setup where basically you need to be in a screen like a list view that you can print. And normally I would print these in, lang uh, in uh, landscape mode, and then I would edit the image size, and I would put it on whatever size paper you want to. We normally use a U.S. letter. And would, once you click the OK, it will go ahead and uh, print that item. Now, on an iPad or iPhone, you would need to have uh, a, a Wi-Fi or a printer like a HP print or something like that is, that is wireless. If you're on an, a Mac or a Windows, you can just plug in a regular printer and go ahead and print from there. Uh, print setup uh, is set up, and then you have print itself where it'll give you a dialog for printing the actual thing. You'd have to select the printer that you're going to be using. You'd do the default settings, copy numbers, 
And what from what record to what record now, what happens is there are different things like the media layout, uh, paper handling and stuff like that that you can do for supply levels and stuff like that. Uh, current records being uh, browsed, if you're in a list view, if you have a thousand records in there and then you accidentally put in there records being browsed, it's going to print all of them. If you only want to print the current records you're viewing, you would click that radio button, that's what print. There's no need to do a blank record showing fields. That's not really used. It's just not what you want to do. You can also print a PDF or save it as a PDF uh, and have a PDF record. Uh, you can send it an email. Uh, you could add it to Apple Books or any of these things if you're on a Mac. It's going to be a little different on a PC than it is on a Mac. And the iPad would be different. The dialog that you're printing on gives you some other options. They're very nice. And they'll be, they'll be explained by the support people when you start to use the application. And we'll be covering those. To print, you have the proper thing and the proper quantity or all the, all the records you're viewing and pages. If you click print, it will print them to your Wi-Fi or the plugged-in printer if you have a Mac or a PC. Okay, that's an awful lot of information. So we're going to break here. I'm going to go back to this particular screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and come back and cover a little bit more in here and a little bit more of some of the uh, records that we're looking at. Okay, let's go ahead and stop here and then we'll come back in the next lesson.